open in-game competitions have been going on for quite a while now. With so many of them each week, I'm sure most of you have gotten a chance to play. And if you have played in them, you probably realize just how tough they can be. So how do the pros do it? How are they winning games so consistently, making into the money every week? How's it going guys? My name is Dan, and in this video, we're going to be analyzing Mitro's recent Cash Cup performances. Even though he's always been fantastic at the game, lately he's been popping off especially hard in these solo events. And so by looking at some of his matches from last week, we can see exactly what strategies he's using to come out on top all the time. We'll be breaking the video down into the early, mid, and late games just so you guys have a better idea of how he plays each part. But before we get into it, we have to ask you guys, show your love for pro guides by smashing that like button. It only takes seconds and really helps us produce these videos. More videos will make you a better player, so it's a win-win. We also noticed most of you guys don't visit our website and you are really missing out because we've added all new analysis videos and trending articles along with on-demand 24-7 coaching and much, much more coming soon. So click that link and check us out. Starting off with how Mitro plays the early game. We looked at a few matches, and one thing to note is that he likes landing at remote locations. Like for instance, here at the Hero Mansion, or here at Starry Suburbs in another game. In one game, he landed in the woods north of Retail, just because everywhere had players. Sharing a landing spot has a lot of downsides, but the main one is having to deal with RNG-influenced fights. By having a spot yourself, you can work on gathering a kit without the worry of enemies pushing you before you're ready to fight. There are a couple of circumstances where Mitro will take fights during the early game. One is if he gets flanked and has nowhere to run. In these situations, running doesn't really help unless you have some mobility to escape with. So instead, he uses his insane mechanical skills and game sense to win the fight. Like in this scenario, he gets surprised by a player flanking his landing zone. Now, most of us would probably box up, panic, and end up using our shockwave grenades in an attempt to escape. But not Mitro. He takes the good old-fashioned build battle. Cranking up, he takes command of height. After landing a few nice shots, the fight turns to his favor and he cleans up the kill with ease. The second scenario is when there's huge loot potential for him. In this game, he didn't really find much other than a gold scar. He was seriously lacking mobility and healing items which are essential to have, and so he heads into retail and sees a player right in front of him. Mitro loves flanking Retail Row just because of how good the outcome usually is. It's got zombies that drop a ton of loot and players farming them but the players farming them are so distracted that it makes flanking so much easier. So usually it's relatively simple to roll up and initiate a fight against zombie farmers with a few rifle shots. He did that exactly here, getting the enemy low. And after a small build fight, he takes the kill and the sweet, sweet zombie loot for himself. Sometimes he'll let off some shots just to avoid the potential storm surge, but unless he gets the player low, he won't risk going in for the finish. Usually, he's just looking for favorable scenarios before committing to the fight. Things like the opponent being low on health or high loot potential. Anytime he spots an enemy, he doesn't fire right away. You can tell he's thinking of whether he should take the engagement or not. Like in this situation, he spots the player going for the llama. Many of us would think, awesome, a llama, let me flank this dude and get all the loot from him. But look at his mats, he doesn't have too many. He also doesn't have a rifle, so he's pretty far from an effective firing range. Also, the storm is about to arrive. If he takes this fight here, he's taking it in the storm against somebody who will definitely have a material advantage. So instead, he makes a smart move to opt out and decides to farm up some more before making his rotation. So unless the kill opportunity is right in his face, Mitro doesn't take many early game encounters. They're just too risky and he's better off playing it safe. While watching Mitro's mid-games, there were a few particular playstyle choices that we noticed. Anytime he still needed to rotate far away, he normally wouldn't take engagements. Like in this example here, he takes the Loot Lake Rift and immediately notices a build battle going on below him. More aggressive players might choose to land there, but Mitro notices how far the next zone is. Participating in this fight could take a while and might ultimately end up being too risky to join. So instead, he avoids the battle and heads to Retail Row. In the other game we showed you, he flanked Retail a lot earlier in the match. In this one, he shows up a bit later, but it's more or less the same situation. Again, he's looking for kills on unsuspecting players so he can pick up some easy loot for himself. One thing I'd like to talk about while we show Mitro frag out is the loadout he uses. He's running two weapons, a pump shotgun and a tactical SMG. Other than that, he's got three utility items, mini shields, the grapnel gun, and shockwave grenades. This seems to be his ideal loadout, with an RPG replacing the shockwave should he find one. These mobility items are crucial. You cannot go into the endgame without one. 
The grapnel gun is honestly one of the best mobility items added to the game in a while, so usually you can get away with just running that by itself. But more mobility never hurts. You'll see just how useful these items are when we get to the end game. Mitro's not using a rifle because of how broken the TAC SMG is right now. It has no damage fall off to structures and can shred through builds like they're butter. Come Season 11, when it hopefully gets nerfed, he and other pros will probably go back to using a rifle instead in their two-weapon loadouts. Anyways, once Mitro picks up his last kill here, he spends no time hesitating and sets up a bouncer launch pad combo. He's looking to set up in the center of the zone here. It's usually the best spot to be around this point in the game, as it really reduces the chances you'll have to make long rotations. That allows you to save on mats and mobility, which come in way handier during the endgame. He makes it right to the center and builds his base out of metal for maximum protection. Remember guys, always make your bases out of brick or steel. Compared to sitting in a wood box, you're much less likely to get pressured by the enemy. So for his mid game, Mitro doesn't want to get caught up in the storm. He prefers to set up in the safe zone. But if he's got the time and he's in the safe zone, he isn't afraid of taking a few fights for extra loot. Alright, so we're in the end game now. We notice that Mitro plays pretty aggressively during this stage. He's not afraid to create edits and spam some shots at nearby players. Most players are either rotating or hiding in their bases, so the risk isn't as high as you'd think. If he sees a newly built wall or someone getting spammed by other players, he joins in for the chance at grabbing a kill. Like in this example, two players succumb to a serious case of getting focused by the lobby. Mitro definitely needs the gear, as his loadout isn't the best, so he tunnels forward and gathers up the free loot. When Mitro has to rotate, he tends to use his mobility and make his move as early as possible. He's doing this not only so he can avoid taking storm damage later, but also so he can get set up and start looking for kills. Players struggle to rotate in either because they're low on mats or out of mobility. So as long as you know where to look and you've got decent enough aim, you can pick up a ton of kills with very little effort. Mitro picks up a majority of his kills during the endgame using this strategy. And that's why mobility is so useful to have during the endgame. With every new circle, he's using either his grapnel gun, shockwaves, or a launch pad, depending on the distance he wants to go, to get closer to the next safe zone. He'll then set up another base and start looking for more eliminations. Okay, so we need to talk about taking high ground at the end of the game. Mitro usually times taking height around when the eighth circle is moving. That's the third circle outside in the storm. This way, if he does secure it, there's less of an opportunity for his opponents to retake it. Their mats are lower, their mobility is depleted, and the zone is so small it can be tough to find an opening. Just a side note, in larger game modes like trios or squads, we usually see the height take occur during the 5th or 6th circles instead. That's just because with way more material, you can hold height for much longer. But in a solo game, you've got way fewer materials to work with, and so the high ground retakes tend to happen closer to the end of the match. So for example, in this game here, he tosses a shockwave but doesn't reach high up enough. He does, however, notice how weak the high ground's foundation is, and so he makes his play. He does a protected ramp rush, fires his RPG, and successfully takes height. Without an RPG, he wouldn't be able to take height as easily, but that's why you carry them. And it's why he goes to retail row so much. It's pretty much those zombies' favorite weapon. The RPG's value is priceless, and you should always try to carry one into the endgame if you can. Here's an example from another game of him taking height the same way. He just picked up an RPG from the kill, and the 8th circle has arrived. He glances up and notices that the high ground isn't supported by much, and so he goes for it. The enemy does manage to catch himself and continue to hold height after the rocket, and so Mitro uses a bouncer to get the last bit of verticality needed to kill his opponent and take high ground. So yeah, guys, use those bouncers, launch pads, RPGs, grapnel guns, or whatever you have at your disposal. If you can take a high ground at the right time, it can be yours to keep for the rest of the match. Once he does take height, the rest of the match becomes relatively simple, but it's not over yet. As he tarps in, he lays down rockets and SMG spam, looking to pressure the players below him and pick up what kills he can. But he's also making sure to defend his high ground. Anyone gliding above him gets focused, and anytime he's up too high, he'll waterfall down and connect his structures to the ones below him. This just ensures he won't die to fall damage should he get shot down. From his position on the high ground, he lays down pressure with his RPG and tack until there's only one player left. To close out the match, he makes sure to never give up his position. From here, he can lay down pressure and stay in the safe zone. Eventually, the last player dies to the storm, and Mitro picks up the dub with full health and a bunch of items he didn't even need to use. GG's. So what have we learned? Well, Mitro doesn't take too many fights during the early game. Unless the fights are in his favor or he's being threatened, there's just too much risk in forcing engagements. He also likes to sneak up on players in retail row to secure some easy loot while players are distracted by the zombies. Mitro makes sure to always have some sort of mobility, because playing the endgame is just so much harder if you don't have any. 
For his endgame positioning, he's always trying to get ahead of the storm so he can set up a base and start looking for kills. Around the 8th circle, aka the third one fully in the storm, he looks to see if he can take high ground. But if he can't, he'll play the low ground using whatever he can as cover. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy what you saw and would like to see more analysis videos like it, drop a like here and make sure to subscribe. Thanks again guys, catch you later.